today we are making vegan Persian kotlet. Kotlet are Persian beef and potato patties. We veganized my mom's recipe by swapping out the beef for lentils. Lately, kotlet has taken on a new significance in Iran. As the uprising against the Islamic Republic approaches the six month mark, kotlet has become a symbol of the revolution. A revolution led by women. So it is in solidarity with the women of Iran that we share our vegan kotlet recipe. Women. Life. Freedom. freedom. Kotlet holds a special significance for me. As a child, nothing got my mouth watering like running into the house after playing basketball to see my mom frying up a batch. It's remained one of my favorite snacks. We'll talk a little bit more about the importance of kotlet after the recipe, but first let's get into the cooking. For this recipe, you'll need russet potatoes, dried brown lentils, breadcrumbs, chickpea flour, an onion, parsley, garlic, ground turmeric, olive oil, salt and pepper. First we start off by boiling the potatoes in salted water until they're fork tender. While the potatoes are cooking, cover the lentils with water in a saucepan. Bring to a boil, cover, reduce heat and simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. Next, we're gonna make some mashed potatoes and let them cool to room temperature. You can use a fork or potato masher, but we like to use a ricer because it yields a much more consistent texture with no lumps. We got ours on Amazon for like 20 bucks and you can make some bomb ass mashed potatoes with it. When they're cooked, the lentils will plump up like this. Drain them and set them aside to cool. Now on to the onions. We're going to grate the onions with a food processor or box grater. We prefer using a food processor for speed, ease of cleanup, and safety. Next, and this is probably the most important step, y'all, we're going to squeeze out as much liquid as we can from the grated onion using a clean dish towel or paper towels. Moisture is the enemy when it comes to maintaining the structural integrity of our cutlets. We're talking Sahara levels of dryness needed to make sure these patties don't fall apart. We'd normally do this step right over the sink, but wanted to show you how much liquid you can squeeze out of these onions. So liquidy. We don't want any of that nonsense in our cutlets. Now we mince some garlic and parsley. Once you've done that, you're ready to make your kotlet mixture. To the potatoes, add lentils, breadcrumbs, chickpea flour, onion, garlic, parsley, turmeric, and salt and pepper. You want to mix until all the ingredients are uniformly combined. Okay, so we like to use chickpea flour because it has a higher protein content than AP flour. The higher protein works well as a binding agent in place of eggs, but if you can't find any chickpea flour, no sweat, AP flour works just as well. Your washed hands are really your best tool here. You'll sense when the ingredients are fully incorporated. And will you look at that? Now is a good time to taste for salt and pepper and get to shaping. Let's shape some cutlets. Scoop out a quarter cup of the cutlet mixture and form them into oval shaped patties. You want them to have the approximate dimensions of a McDonald's hash brown for lack of a better comparison. We use a quarter cup scoop of mixture for each cotelette to ensure even cooking. After you form your cotelette, arrange them on a lined baking sheet. So there are three cooking options here. We're gonna show you all three and compare them side by side so you can choose the method that works best for you. The traditional method is the pan fried option. All right, so first arrange a baking rack over a paper towel lined baking sheet. Anytime you fry anything, you want to let what you're frying cool on a baking rack. This will help maximize the crispiness, thanks to the air circulation around whatever you're frying. Heat enough oil in a frying pan for a shallow fry over high heat. You'll know when the oil is ready when it shimmers. Test it by sprinkling in some breadcrumbs. If the breadcrumbs sizzle, you'll know the oil is ready. All right, so it's important to cook on high heat here. I'm thinking a seven or eight. Otherwise, the cutlet will dissolve. Fry your cutlet for two to three minutes on each side or until the patties become a deep, rich brown. 
Our second cooking option is air frying. Spray or brush the air fryer basket with oil to prevent sticking. Then generously spray or brush the cutlets with oil. Arrange the cutlets in one layer over the bottom of an air fryer basket and cook them in batches at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 17 minutes, flipping midway through. Our last cooking option is baking. Liberally brush or spray the cutlets with oil and bake them at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes, flipping midway through. If the cutlets are not as brown as you'd like them, broil them on high for one to two minutes. And now for the big reveal. The air fryer method is our favorite cooking method because it's less labor intensive than pan frying, less dangerous, uses less oil and still yields moist, crispy cutlets. Pan frying will yield the moistest cutlets because of all the oil involved. So, if you're air frying or baking, we recommend spraying or brushing a good amount of oil onto the cutlets before cooking them. This will help develop a crisp brown crust on the cutlets while adding moisture. Cutlet is a finger food best enjoyed with a spread of pita bread, radishes, pickles, tomatoes, and fresh herbs like basil, dill, parsley, cilantro, and mint. We mentioned at the beginning of the video how cutlet has taken on a new significance in the uprising against the Islamic Republic in Iran. A little while back, this photo of a potato began making the rounds online. The potato went viral because it bears a strong resemblance to Islamic Republic general and all-around douchebag Qasem Soleimani. Potatoes are one of the main ingredients for cutlet. So just like that, cutlet became one of the symbols for the uprising against the Islamic Republic. Recently, Tehran-based food blogger Navab Ebrahimi was arrested for posting a recipe for cutlet to his over 2 million followers on Instagram. Prior to 1979, Iran was a westernized ally of the U.S. Women didn't have to wear the hijab and were treated as equals. Alcohol was openly sold in stores and restaurants. The government was secular just like the U.S. The Shah of Iran controlled the government as a brutal dictator who suppressed dissent and tortured political prisoners. But in 1979, there was a revolution to overthrow the Shah. Sadly, the situation went from bad to worse. Today, the country is strictly governed by Islamic law. Dissent is still not tolerated, but now women are treated as second-class citizens. But things are changing. The murder of a young woman named Massa Amini has sparked a movement for that change. Today, we're witnessing the first modern revolution led by women. In an attempt to stymie the uprising, the government has cut most of the internet in Iran. But the world is paying attention. Familiar faces are using their voices to amplify Iranian voices. We encourage all of you to do the same and make this cutlet recipe in solidarity with the women of Iran. Head over to plantbasedpassport.com for the full recipe, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you do try this recipe, please leave a comment on our blog and share a photo of your creation on Instagram or TikTok. Don't forget to tag us. We release new videos every Friday.